Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So Passover is coming up in a few days and in today's video, we're gonna be attempting to veganize a few traditional Jewish recipes. Yeah, every year for Passover, we go to see my extended family here in Colorado and every year we don't have anything to eat. We're trying to avoid that this year. So we are going to attempt to make some sort of vegan brisket substitute, some matzo ball soup. And we're gonna finish it off with a little choroset, which is really quick and easy to make. So it's been a long time since I've actually like eaten all the Passover foods as a non-vegan. So I FaceTimed my dad and we consulted with him about like what the brisket was like growing up, what the matzo ball soup was like growing up, just cause I don't really remember that well. We filmed some of that conversation with my dad. So let's hear what he had to say. FaceTime Eric's dad tonight. Hello. How are you? Good. Okay, so... Maybe I'll do this, though. Okay. No, then my head's shiny and bald. Your head's shiny and bald no matter which way the camera's <laughs> angle. <laughs> okay, so we were looking at brisket recipes, and some of them have, like, brown sugar and honey and, like, all these sweet things in it, but I don't remember your brisket or Claudia's brisket being like that. Neither one of us really puts like sweetening stuff in it, but some people have made like a sweet and sour type of a mm. gravy that is like encompasses like melted brown sugar into it or yeah. things like that. But we don't generally do that. Like ours is usually the traditionally based onion soup mix. Mm. Okay. That's usually what we do. We could probably just find that in like the Jewish aisle of the <laughs> grocery store. Okay. Definitely. I mean, you can use regular Lipton's onion okay. soup. Or so that explains why I don't remember brisket ever being sweet, because our family... It really wasn't. Okay. Yeah, we never really did that. So when it comes to matzo ball soup, like what mm. kind of veggies do you put in it? Because Sarah asked me and I was like, I think just carrots and celery. Well, yeah, traditionally, and you're saying matzo ball soup, but matzo ball soup is usually chicken soup with yeah. matzo balls. Yeah. So a traditional chicken soup, when Claudia makes that... Yeah. She does put in carrots, she puts in celery, she puts in onions, uh, and definitely dill is like mm. a key for that. The dill. Love dill in there. Yeah. But when you serve the soup, like on Passover, which veggies do you leave in? What do you strain out? Oh, okay. So generally just leave in the carrots and strain okay. everything else out. Simple. Yeah. Simplistic. Exactly. Okay. Usually, yeah. Cool. So. Anything else? Is that it? Do you want to like sing a song or something? Do you want to do like a little Tevia dance? Stop, we're gonna get copyrighted. <laughs> okay, well, thank you. That was great information because I don't remember any of these things because it's been like seven years since I've actually eaten Passover food. So, well, you're welcome. I'm happy to be your Jewish dad. Thank you. You literally are, but yes. The liquor store on the hunt for Manischewitz because you can't buy alcohol at grocery stores in Colorado. We found it and it says blackberry, which I did not know was a thing. But the best part is that as we found it, Billy Joel came on over the speakers. <laughs> a, a Jew from Long Island like me. Much like the Jews escaping Egypt and trekking across the desert, we trekked across the grocery store parking lot and found the Jewish wine. Time to make haroset. So, <laughs> right there. <laughs> so I think we got everything we need. We found the onion soup mix, which is accidentally vegan. And I think this is gonna add a lot of like the savory flavor. And then last night I stayed up till an ungodly hour researching brisket recipes, trying to decide what I wanted to use as our meat. Honestly, 90% of the time we make seitan, we don't like it. So I was like, I don't, I don't wanna make a seitan brisket. I saw a lot of people making jackfruit brisket. Generally the best place to find jackfruit is at an Asian market. We don't have one near us. So I checked Trader Joe's, they usually have canned jackfruit. They were out, I was able to find some of this, which comes pre-shredded and lightly seasoned, and I think it should be fine. So we got a small packet of that. And then I thought, you know what, why don't we also try adding in some mushrooms? I've seen people kind of roast and shred mushrooms as a substitute for pulled meat. Again, if we had an Asian market near us, I would have found the king trumpet mushrooms, but instead I was able to find some of these oyster mushrooms. They look kind of shady actually, but I think it'll be good. And then lastly, I thought, let's just add in some impossible too. We'll make like a little loaf of impossible and braise it. And um, 
if we don't like the jackfruit or the mushrooms, then at least we'll have our brisket flavored impossible. And then for our matzo ball soup, I got some plain matzo meal. And then I also got this box of matzo ball mix. And I think it's just matzo meal with some seasonings and you just add in some oil and some eggs. I am going to attempt tonight to simply substitute in just egg for the eggs. I'm not super confident that it's gonna work. We'll find out together. Okay, so we just finished putting together the base of the brisket. It's kind of just like a flavor bomb sauce thing. The first thing we did is we seared the loaf of Impossible and it only stuck to the cast iron a little bit. Then I had sliced up some white onion and we added those and kind of scraped up all of the goodness from the Impossible and then deglazed it with some red wine. And then after the red wine cooked off a little bit, we added in a can of diced tomatoes and stirred those around. Then we started in an entire packet of this Lipton onion soup mix, which smells really good. Mm -hmm. Then I added a hearty unmeasured squirt of ketchup and a tiny little splash of apple cider vinegar for some acidity. And then we just let it cook for like a minute or two and uh, here we are. So we're gonna transfer it now to this nine by 13 baking dish. You forget how heavy the cast irons are. <laughs> I want to get every last drop. I'm just going to add this cup of water because the onion soup mix is really salty. So we're going to just dilute it a little bit and that'll cook off too a little bit. Earlier I went ahead and prepared some aromatic veggies, celery, carrot, whole cloves of garlic. And we're going to make a little bed for our brisket oid things. <laughs> our brisket oid. Go ahead. Plop. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna nestle all the meat-esque things kind of just in a row so they all get nice and cooked in order. So we're gonna start with the impossible. You're gonna be in the middle because I feel like you're the star of the show. <laughs> it's actually falling apart a little. It's okay. It'll be fine. It's falling off the bone. <laughs> okay, now we have these. These are oyster mushrooms, right? Mm-hmm. I'm gonna put these little babies kind of just like right there. I'll just throw these extras. Just nestled in a little bit, you know? Mm-hmm. Then we got the jackfruit shreds. Give that a sniff. I taste it and it tastes a little... What is that? Weird. <laughs> Strange. It smells like lime juice, but I looked on the package and it doesn't say there's any lime juice in it. Hmm. It smells a little acidic. But I dipped a piece of it into our like basting Mixture. fluid and it tasted good, so I think it'll be okay. Okay, I'm just gonna fill up this whole area with it. Okay. I'm gonna dump it all out and then I'll rearrange. It really does look the most like, well, how brisket is supposed to look when it comes out and you cut it. Mm-hmm, nice. Okay, I'm texting my dad a photo <laughs> of this just to tell him like, I just need to keep him updated <laughs> on the process because I feel like he is invested. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm gonna preheat the oven, 325 probably, um, and uh, Pop it in there. We're gonna start cooking it with foil, covering the whole thing, sealing it up, and presumably at the end we'll pop it off. Mm-hmm. Boom. <laughs> okay. So due to my poor planning, <laughs> the brisket is not gonna be ready till very late, and then I'll probably have to like spend a good amount of time photographing it. So we are now headed to Chipotle <laughs> to get something to tide ourselves over. Listen. This is like, if you ever wanted like a deep look into um, the lives of people who cook stuff, you know, like on the internet for a living, this is what happens a lot. It takes a really long time to like do it and film it. And you end up getting Chipotle a lot on these nights. Mm -hmm. I'm not complaining. <laughs> <laughs> I got the goods. <laughs> go, go, go. It is the following day. Let me give you a little status update on everything. So we cooked the brisket for maybe a little over two hours. I took the foil off around the halfway point. We cooled it down, popped it in the fridge. We're gonna taste test everything later. While the brisket was cooking, I went ahead and tested out this matzo ball mix by substituting in some just egg. Pretty much as soon as I put them in the water to boil them, they disintegrated. And I mean like fully disintegrated, as in it was like, matzo ball soup. soup. <laughs> <laughs> it was like matzo porridge, okay? I was just waiting in the other room for an update and I just hear from the other room like, babe, it's not good. And I was like, how bad could it possibly be? Yeah, it was just like sludge. 
don't do it. This comes with two packets, so I tried the other packet using this egg replacer by Simple Truth, which is a mixture of chia seeds and garbanzo beans. And I had like the opposite issue, which is that they were very kind of like gummy and dense. I cried a little, but then I woke up today and I had gotten a message from someone who follows me on Instagram who lives in Israel and she said her sister has the best vegan matzo ball recipe and she was kind enough to share it. The secret ingredients are applesauce and cornstarch as the egg replacer. Two-ish hours ago, I prepared the matzo ball recipe. They are currently in the fridge firming up. For that, it was just matzo meal, a little bit of cornstarch, some baking powder, which I've seen in some recipes and not others, but I think it just helps make them fluffy. A little bit of a garlic powder, salt and pepper to taste, the applesauce, then some oil. I used some melted vegan butter just because I only we only had olive oil and I didn't want it to affect the flavor too much. So I combined all those ingredients and then I kind of gradually added warm water. At this point, the dough is pretty soft, but I formed it into balls. I just used a one inch cookie scoop and I popped them in the fridge and they've already firmed up quite a bit since then. And then I also went ahead and made the soup portion of the matzo ball soup. And that's pretty much just the same as making a vegan chicken noodle soup minus the noodles. So I chopped up a bunch of celery, onion, carrots, and garlic. I left the onion and celery kind of on the bigger side because we are going to fish all of that out so there's just carrots left. So I sauteed all of that. I gave the celery and the onion a little bit of a head start. Then added the carrots and the minced garlic. And then my favorite like vegan chicken style bouillon is by Edward and Sons. You can find it at a lot of places. I think we usually get it at Sprouts. They're just little bouillon cubes. So I popped two of those in there with water. I threw in two bay leaves and then I just brought it to a boil, reduced the heat and I have it simmering on the stove still. I am probably gonna add a little bit of lemon juice and then lots of fresh dill when it comes time to serve it. And we're actually going to cook the matzo ball separately just in a big pot of boiling water. You can technically cook it directly in the soup but it just makes the soup like a bit cloudy and gray so we're not going to do that. So we are going to make some haroset which is a Passover staple. Okay we looked this up the other day and I'm trying to remember. It symbolizes when the Jews were slaves in Egypt to Pharaoh, the mortar that held the bricks together because they had to build a bunch of things for Pharaoh. So the haroset is representative of that. Is that right? Mm-hmm. That's right, right? Okay, I shouldn't be smiling. It's very sad. So Sarah went ahead and peeled and finely diced two, are they Honeycrisp apples? And then we have the rest of our ingredients here, which are just some chopped walnuts, some of the manischewitz that we got, and some ground cinnamon. And that's literally it. Some people add like maple syrup or honey for non-vegans just for a little extra sweetness, but it might be fine because the wine is so sweet. You literally just mix everything together, crack this wine open. Who am I kidding? I've already cracked it open. That is so much. <laughs> this is actually the first time I've ever made this. I'm like, can I do it? It's really easy. <laughs> it's immediately giving me like the nostalgia feeling, just smelling it. A lot of people, I think everyone usually makes this like the day before. So I'm just gonna cover it and pop it in the fridge and we'll come back to it tomorrow. But you mind if I take a bite of it now? Go for it. Ready? I am very, very ready. We're finally wrapping up this many day saga. Mm -hmm. We have all of our, well, we don't have the haro set yet, but we've got all of our dinner entrees here. Mm -hmm. We've got the impossible brisket, jackfruit, and then the mushrooms, I just shredded them with two forks. We have our matzo ball soup, which I'm very excited about. Um, also, as for the dill, I'm not sure if I've said this before in the video, but I didn't know that dill went in there and I'm expecting like a nostalgic flavor, even though I didn't realize there was dill, mm -hmm. you know? It is nostalgic. Mm -hmm. It is really good. They are fluffy. They're not gummy at all. They're very smooth. You did a really good job. So the third try was a charm with the matzo balls. Mm -hmm. And the recipe that I got from my friend on Instagram really worked out. 
they look really nice too. So one of the issues I had with the second batch that I tried using the commercial egg replacer was that even though they were super dense and gummy on the inside, the outsides were kind of like falling apart. It just like looked really shaggy. And these are like perfectly smooth mm -hmm. and they really are like fluffy. The right amount of fluff, but with the right amount of, mm -hmm. of tooth, isn't that what people say? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Toothiness. It's correct. Right? How clear are your memories of matzo balls? Like mm. if you're comparing this to matzo balls with eggs. I think it's been too long, but mm -hmm. I mean, people just make different matzo balls. Some families have like denser matzo balls, some like fluffier matzo balls, some do little ones, some mm -hmm. do one big one. I've seen that. Like just one huge matzo ball in the middle. But these are perfect. I mean, you can make these every year and I'll, mm -hmm. be, I'll be pleased. <laughs> Sounds so spoiled. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, delicious. I think I've actually only had matzo balls like once or twice in my life. Mm. I grew up in Southern California. There was like one Jewish deli in my town. I think one of my classmates' families owned it actually. Our shredded meats. What do you want to try first? Uh, jackfruit, I think. Okay. For no reason at all. Jackfruit really does look quite convincing. It has a little extra tang from the jackfruit that I can taste. From the seasoning that came on the jackfruit? Yeah, exactly. That is it's good, coming though. through, but it's coming through less than I expected it would. I mean, we cooked this at this point two nights ago. Yeah. And it's just been sitting in all of the flavors. It really did soak it up. Brisket's one of those things that like you eat the night of and you're like, oh, that's so good. And then when you have leftovers, you're like, oh, it's even better. For that exact reason, it like soaks up all the, the goodness. It is really good. I'm like surprised how much I like that. Yeah, oh, I'm so happy. I've always been a fan of jackfruit. This one doesn't love it. So I kind of stopped making it mm. as often. That's good. Oh, the one thing I would say is if you can get your hands on the canned jackfruit that just comes in a plain brine, no seasoning. I do think that that would come out even better. Yeah. I have to say when I did pull out all the brisket stuff from the oven, I sniffed the mushrooms and they had this like overwhelming seafood smell that I don't, is that normal? I don't think I've ever cooked with this type of mushroom before. Let's do it. I'm kind of scared. I don't like it. Yeah, I like them because I like mushrooms, but as for like a meat replacement, eh. I'm sure there's a better way I could have prepared them. Like maybe after shredding them, like popping them back into the oven to kind of crisp up yeah. even, I don't know. They are good, mm -hmm. but they're not like brisket replacement to me. They do taste fishy to me. They taste like mm -hmm. lobstery to me, which kind of leads me to believe we should fry them and make oyster mushroom po' boys. Wait, oh, oh my God. Yeah. This is really stupid. They're called oyster mushrooms. Oh, maybe, Seafood? That's, maybe that's why. <laughs> Duh! Okay, That anyway. does make sense. <laughs> yeah, jackfruit is still the winner for me. Okay, let's try the impossible bleeble. That's a large bite. <laughs> it just tastes like an impossible burger. It tastes like meatloaf. It's good. I'm just gonna put a little of like the fixins, like the extra sauce and stuff. Just like caramelized on onions. The vegetables are really soft. These whole cloves really of garlic are like buttery soft right now. You could like spread it on toast. If you want to use impossible, you should add the basting liquid ingredients into the actual meat and make like, like a little meatloaf. You yeah, know? yeah. It didn't like penetrate like <laughs> yeah, the other two. Exactly. The onion soup mix. You could even like dice the onions really small and caramelize them and then deglaze with the wine and like add that mixture mm. into the meat as well. Yeah. I feel like we'll try that. Weirdly, I think the jackfruit is my favorite. Yeah, I think I agree. And like Sarah said, I historically don't really like jackfruit, mm -hmm. but it's because the sauce got in it more than anything. Mm -hmm. So it tastes the most like brisket. Accurate? It's like exactly how I remember it. Okay. When I walked in there and smelled it for the first time, I was just like, oh, childhood. A lot of people told me that they recommended the avant-garde vegan brisket seitan recipe and the Wicked Health or Wicked Kitchen seitan mm -hmm. brisket. Maybe we'll try that for Next like year. Hanukkah or something. <laughs> yeah, we'll yeah. see. Um, dessert, I almost forgot. We have the haroset. Unfortunately, we don't have any matzah because we didn't need matzah for any of the actual recipes. So we never actually bought any. You're supposed to eat it with it. Like scoop it. Scoop it? I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Oh. I mean, I think even if you're not supposed to do it, it's really good. Who cares? Well, I tried it the other day and it was like, it needed to set. This is the only thing that mm. we usually are able to eat mm -hmm. at the Seder. Mm -hmm. This and um, the matzah and horseradish. Even some horseradish is not vegan. Why? there's like egg whites in it. It smells refreshing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just so pure because like, you know, obviously they're only like four ingredients. 
I like that. So now that we're at the end, how did that feel as a goy <laughs> making all these things and just, I don't know, how did it feel to like see me I'm so excited about everything? It was and, great. It was yeah. great cultural immersion. Good. Mm -hmm. We will actually start putting forth effort for Passover yeah. moving forward because we know yeah. it's not like so difficult. We really should. I think that wraps it up. Thank you guys so much for joining us on this journey. It's been a long one. It was worth it. It was a lot of fun. If you have any other favorite like Passover or Jewish recipes that you think we should try out or test. Yeah, like what should we make on Hanukkah mm -hmm. next Passover? Just give us all the ideas. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Bye guys. Bye. Look I am. Yeah, da, da, da. Fade that out. <laughs>